Hallelujah. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go over to Luke. What did I say? Luke chapter four. All right. I'm going to start. I'm going to I'm going to start off this morning with the assignment. Sometime when I begin to minister the word of God, I start with the with a solution. Is that all right? So I'm going to start off. I'm going to start you off with the with the solution. And then we can and then you can we'll we'll be we'll navigate our way back to where we started by the end. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. Is, is, is that all right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Number one, if we're going to make a difference, if we're going to make a difference, we must accept that we are equipped, that we are equipped to do what Jesus did. Say to do. So if we're going to make a, a difference in the earth, we must accept that we are equipped to do what Jesus did. Jesus operated in the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus did signs, wonders, and miracles. Jesus had an apostolic anointing on his life where he made disciple and he was a reproducer of reproducers. Jesus made it his mandate to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is where? And so if we are going to make a difference as we are Christians, as we are followers of Christ, as the anointing of Jesus Christ is in us, as the anointing of Jesus Christ is up on us, it's upon us. If we are going to make, make a difference, then we must accept that we are equipped, say equipped, Amen. that we are equipped to do what Jesus did. We have the same equipment. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We have the gift of the Holy Ghost. The apostle Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive what? You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Write that down. Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the mission of your sin. You shall receive the gift of the what? Holy Ghost. So we, we, the first point I want you to begin to get today, and then we'll walk our way through it, is that you have the same equipment that Jesus possessed. If Jesus asked, if the Bible says these signs shall follow them that do what? Believe, but it's wrong for Jesus to say that the same signs are going to follow you that follow him if he had different equipment than you have. Does that make sense? If Jesus had different equipment than you had, then it's wrong for him to require you to be able to do the same thing that he he did. You'll just turn back to Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm not you. Right. And so Jesus has given us the same equipment, say equipment. equipment. All right. Number two. Number two, we must be committed to die to self and let go of the mistakes of yesterday in order to minister. Say minister. minister. In order to minister the works of God. We are his minister. Say that when we say I am, I am. a minister, a minister. Of, God. of God. Jesus died so that you could be a minister. That is one of the fundamental Reasons why Jesus died. Jesus died so that you could do the works of our father in heaven. Jesus died so that being a minister is not a classist system. Peter said, this is that which the prophet Joel spoke in the last days. You shall do what? Prophesy. Who's going to prophesy? Well, old men are going to dream dreams and young men are going to see what? Visions. He said, my sons and daughters shall prophesy, even your men servants and handmaidens shall do what? Prophesied. And so Jesus needs to get what he what he paid for. What Jesus paid for was to take the anointing of the Levites. Jesus paid to take the anointing of the prophet and, and distribute that to the body of what? Of Christ. And so Jesus needs to get what he he paid for. In order to do that, we must be committed to die to ourselves and accept that Jesus is the answer. Number three, am I going too fast? Number three, we are to minister as the Spirit gives us utterance. Say, as, as the Spirit, Spirit gives, us gives us utterance. 
Number three, we are to minister as the spirit gives us utterance by an act of what? Of faith. When, when we talk about faith, what we're talking about is an aggressive, not a passive, but an aggressive act of our will according to the word of, of God. What that, what that means is that we're, we are not constantly and persistently uh, positioned as individuals to be waiting for God to fall on us. Yeah, I'll, I'll walk in wisdom, apostle, if it just fall on me. I'll wait till that happens. I'll walk, I'll speak in tongues, but I'm not going to speak unless it fall on me on its own. I'm not going to lay hands unless the Lord come down on Sunday morning in, with, a, with a great light and break the eastern sky and look me direct in the eye and say, you got to lay hands on the sick that they might recover now. We're not, we're not waiting on that. That is, that is to defame the sacrifice of Christ. Jesus already did that. And he has now ascended to sit at the right hand of what? The father. He's given us instructions. He's been working for at least 6,000 years to make sure we have at least 66 instructions of the word of God that tells us what to, what to do. Our job is to, to read it and do it. The scripture says, be ye not hearers of the word, only so what? Deceiving your what? Your own selves. And so we have the... We have the instruction manual. We are to follow the example of the disciples of Jesus Christ. We've already been taught that they do not stop every time an opportunity arises and ask the Lord if it is his what? Will. They already know what his will is. Are you with me this morning? All right. Number, number four, I think I got five of these. Yes. Say yes. 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 A holy lifestyle is essential to the power of ministry. We'll talk about that in a minute this morning, but say it one more time. Say yes. yes. Somebody say, Apostle, is it essential for me to live right in order to operate by the power of the Holy Spirit? And the answer to that is yes. yes. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I forget uh, who, who, I don't remember whose song it was, but they said, yes, Lord. But how long? <laughs> for the rest of our days. You should live a holy lifestyle for the rest of your Days. That should be your, your goal. That's your commission. That's your assignment. That's your mandate. We know there's therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. We know that we are saved by grace through what? Faith. But we know that that's not a license to do whatever we want, though. The answer to your question is yes. You should, you should live a a holy lifestyle. The, the, the scripture says your answer should constantly be yes and amen. amen. Number five, y'all got these down? Number five, say freely. freely. Jesus told the disciples back in Matthew chapter 10. He said it very simply. Heal the lepers. Raise the dead. Bring healing to the sick. Cast out demons. He said, freely you have what? Freely do what? The scripture said, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That means we're, we're not stingy when administering the, the Holy Ghost. We're in, we're, we're in the apostolic prophetic age now. We're no longer stingy in the body of Christ. We're, 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 somebody asks you for a prophetic word, you, know, you no longer have to go and fast for seven days and pray for seven nights to release a prophetic word to them. Somebody need healing, you no longer have to ask them to wait into the healing and deliverance conference. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're no longer stingy. You can release the genie spirit off of you where if somebody asks you for some help in the Holy Ghost, you begin to feel like they're wanting you to be a, a genie. They're not wanting you to be a genie. They just want you to be like Jesus. Right. Jesus, people found Jesus in the New Testament, and they had problems, they asked him for help. What did he do? I'm not, I ain't no genie. Why y'all keep asking me all this stuff? Is that, what, is that in the scriptures? No. What did Jesus do when people had problems? They needed help. They needed to be delivered from demons. They needed to be set free from sickness and disease. They needed a word from Jesus. What did Jesus do? He gave it to them. He helped them. Jesus said it clearly. Freely you have what? Receive freely, do what? 
All right, how many, by a show of, raise both of your hands if you're with me this morning. If I'm going too fast, y'all been Baptists before, just say, hold on, preacher. All right, Luke chapter 4, verse 32. Let's go over there. Luke chapter 4, verse 32. I have too many Bibles. Luke chapter 4, verse 32. Luke is the third book of the New Testament. Luke chapter 4, verse 32. If, if you have it, when you have it, say amen. 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 I'm going to start reading in verse 31. Is that all right? And he came to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. They were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with what? Power. Power. Verse 33. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to do what? And we learned last week that the reason why the devil asked that is because he just heard Jesus say earlier on in the chapter that the spirit of the Lord was what? Upon him. Back up in verse 18, he said the spirit of the Lord had done what? Anointed him. And so the, the demon recognized that Jesus had the anointing on his life. We learn from the book of Isaiah that the anointing is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of what? God. And so the devil asked the natural question, which was, have you come to do what? Destroy us, knowing that Jesus now had upon his life the power to destroy the works of the of the enemy. Are you with me in verse 35? Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold thy what? Peace and come what? When the devil had thrown himself in the midst, he came out of him and heard him what? Not. Verse 36, and they were amazed, spake among themselves, saying, what a word is this? For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they do what? Come out, Come out of him. All right. So this, this, this gets to our first come to Jesus dialogue for this morning. And it is, it is very easy to see what Jesus can do. But it's altogether another thing to come to a realization that I am made in the image and likeness of Christ and I can do what Jesus did. That's 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 the first that's sort of the first bastion of hope there. That's that that's the first level of discipleship is to begin to realize that I can do or I have a responsibility to do what the master is doing. Are you with me this morning? So it's, it's one thing. It's a recalibration. Just lay, begin to lay hands on your mind. What church, what church folks are, are struggling with the most is the idea between what it is that Jesus can do and the gap between that and what it is that I can what? Do. What discipleship is about. Say discipleship. What discipleship is about, if we could define discipleship, what discipleship is about is closing the gap between what it is I perceive that Jesus is able to do and what it is that I perceive that I can what do. As that gap is closed, as we shrink the gap between what I believe we spent, we've spent decades preaching about what it is Jesus can do. Normally, when you were in church as a child, the sermon comprised of three points about what it is that Jesus can do. Did it not? Yeah. Jesus is the rose of Sharon. Jesus is the everlasting God. Jesus is the, uh, my provider. Won't he do it? Hallelujah. Yeah! Yeah. Glory to God. And you spent the last 20, the first 20 years you were in church, you spent in awe of all that Jesus said and what? did and that's what this scripture is about they were in awe of all that Jesus was said and what did. did but discipleship is not about standing in awe of Jesus though if you read the book of Matthew Mark Luke and John the job of the disciples was not to stand around Jesus giving them giving themselves high fives around Jesus as they expounded upon everything that they did do you see that in Matthew Mark Luke and, and John do you see them doing that do you see them in pulpits and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John preachers just giving them, the disciples giving themselves high five. Ain't he all right? Look at Jesus. Do you see them doing that? 
Every time Jesus changed water to wine or every time Jesus walked on water, do you see uh, Peter, James, and John building Jesus an altar and saying, hey, Peter, James, ain't he all right? Hallelujah! <laughs> Is that their job in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? No, that's not their job. Their job in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is to see Jesus lay hands on the sick, and then their responsibility after that is to do what? Go lay hands on the what? Sick. They, their responsibility is to study, observe how Jesus cast out demons, and then after that, Jesus turned to them and say, now you what? Do it. And so there's, there's the discipleship is about shrinking the gap. It's about an acceptance plan between what it is I perceive as a Christian that Jesus can do and what it is I perceive that I can what? Do. do. All right, go over to Matthew chapter 6. Let's talk about our mindset, our mentality on closing the gap as, we, as we're continuing to talk about walking in the power of Christ in you. Walking in the power of Christ in you. So how do I begin to close the gap and accept the, the mandate, accept the assignment, accept the power of Christ in me? Look at your neighbor and say, it's a personal relationship. In Matthew chapter 6, I want to focus on part B this morning, but in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus commands the disciples, when you pray, go into your closet and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father which seeth in secret shall reward you how? Openly. And so as we begin to, to bridge the gap, I'm just talking about the power of Jesus Christ on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. As we begin to close the gap, there's a need to accept, say accept. There is a need to accept it that God is okay with rewarding you openly. Say, I am okay. okay. If the Father Father rewards me me openly. openly. With with, with an emphasis on you, though. So one of our issues as, as children of God is that, come, come up here for a second, Sister Sonia. Sister Sonia, come up here, and Elder Reggie, come with her. And so as a, as a child of God, one of our, one of our battles, sorry I didn't come, come back, Sister Sonia. I'm sorry that brother, brothers don't never help the sisters on time. Come on, Sister Sonia. <laughs> All right? All right, come on, Sister Sonia. Come on over here, Elder Reggie. Come on this side, brother, Elder Reggie. All right, so one of my issues as a, as a child of God is my perception. Say perception. perception. And it's about your spiritual perception as a, as a child of God. And it is the, the understanding, the transition, the transforming by the renewing of my mind as it relates to what some people, elders in the body of Christ, are able to do. And then what I am able to do if I'm not a what? Elder. And so I'm, I'm okay that God is going to reward the elders what? Openly. I'm good with that. I mean, Pat, yeah, Pastor Crystal, he's going to reward her openly. She looked like she'd been openly rewarded. <laughs> right? Elder Reggie looks like he's been openly rewarded. When I see him on Sunday morning, I'm like, yeah, the Lord is going to speak to him today. <laughs> right? Sometime in there when the musical praise and worship team does their thing, the Lord is going to give him a word. But my problem is I'm not sure that God is going to do what? Give me a word. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine that Peter... James and John and all those types are going to get a word. But what I'm concerned about is like the other 70, though. Like, is he going to give little old me a word? And so the, one of the first things y'all preaching with me this morning, I'm talking about you, Sister Sonia. One of the things is I want you to get Matthew chapter 6, 6b, and your father which sees in secret shall reward you what? Openly. That's a, that's a thought right there. Just stand back, Sister Sonia, Elder Reggie. Just, just stand back for a minute. I want, you to, I want you to meditate on that. I want you to meditate on, are you okay that the Father will reward you openly? Are you okay with that, Sister Kevin? Because sometimes we battle, don't we? Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's a little battle on the, on, the, on the battlefield of our mind on whether or not God will reward little old me openly. The, the reason is because I've gone through decades now, apostle of dirty, filthy rags, grace preaching. Yeah, yeah good word. Good word. Someone told me that was the, the gospel. I'm not a saint, 
What I am is a dirty, filthy rag. And what I do is I come to church every seven days so that I can hear someone give me the gospel who I believe is not as dirty as, as I am. And then when they fall, I'm disappointed because I received the gospel from them with the mindset that they are not as dirty as I am. I received the gospel with the mindset that they're able to do something that I cannot what? Do. And so there's a need for a transformation of the what? Of the mind. There's a need for a transformation of the mind for me to accept the fact that God is able to reward me what? Okay. Openly. Now, the only question you need to ask yourself is how long is it going to take you? How many more years do you need? Just write yourself a little note. Take out a piece of paper right now. Those of you who are in South Carolina and YouTube land, y'all take out y'all's piece of paper too. Take out your piece of paper. I want you to write yourself a little note. And I want you to ask yourself, how much longer do you need in this spiritual psychology session before you accept it that God will reward you openly? How much longer, how much more time do you need to be comfortable that you can remove it from your mind, that you can remove it from the words that come out of your mouth, that it's okay that God will reward you what? Okay. Openly. Amen. Give Sister Sonia and Elder Reggie a hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Did you write yourself a note? Did you make a decision? Sometimes someone just needs to give us an opportunity to make a Decision. The gospel is about decisions. Amen. How much longer do you need? Jesus said, you shall receive what? Power. After that, the Holy Ghost is what? Come upon you. I'm okay that Jesus had the Holy Ghost. The, the only question is, am I okay that I have the same equipment? God has given some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for what? The perfecting of the what? Saints, Saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And really the only question is in this come to Jesus session is how much longer do you need to accept it? That it's okay that you have the same equipment that Jesus had? That it's okay that you accept it, that you have the same mandate that Jesus had. Go over to 1 Peter chapter 4. I'm going to be done before you know it. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. When you get that, say, amen. 1 Peter is toward the end of the New Testament. Go past Hebrews or Hebrews. Go past the book of James. Jesus, brother, after you get past Jesus, oldest brother, you'll find there the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. Did y'all say amen? Amen. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of of God if any man minister let him do it as of the ability which God what gives I want to I want to stop right there if any man there are two things that we're asked to do here and and the the, the scope of who can do it is any what man do you see that in the scriptures all right, if, if any man do two things, if any man speak, say speak. speak, and if any man minister, say minister. minister, if any man speak, how should he do it? Let him speak as the what? Oracles of what? God. And, and oracle means one who is led by utterance. That's what an oracle is. An oracle is one who is led by what? 
utterance. In, in the scriptures, you'll see that when the disciples receive an utterance from God, it'll say they receive utterance as they were led by the Holy Ghost. All right. And so what it means to be an oracle of God means someone who speaks for God or someone who speaks as if God is speaking. But the way that you do it, if it is, if you are an oracle, is that you do it as you are led by the what? Spirit. And so as you begin to feel the spirit decrease, as you begin to feel the spirit subside, then how do you begin to speak then? You end it. You stop. I'm just, I, I'm prophesying. I'm speaking as an oracle, which means I prophesy only as long as I feel the anointing is on me. Only as, only as long as I continue to hear words that the spirit is, is speaking, then I'm speaking as a what? Oracle. If a man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If a man minister, say minister. Minister means to serve. If any man minister, let him, how should he do it? Let him do it. I love the Bible. It always interprets itself. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God, what? Give it. Give it. And there, there's an E-T-H on the end of the word give. That means that God is continuously and perpetually doing what? Giving. That means that God, we are not ministering just on what God gave on yesterday, but we are ministering even today with an expectation that God is going to continue to pour out. God, we, we give it, we minister as of the ability which God what? Gives. Why do we do it? That God in all things may be what? Glorified through what? Oh, but I want you to make sure you saw that. Did you just see that? God wants to get the glory through who? Oh, but there's, there's a little clause there. Do you see that? There's a requirement. There's something that has to happen in order for God to get the glory. I thought God get the glory on his own. <laughs> there's something that needs to happen in order for God to get the glory. What? There are two things. We must be willing to speak, and then we must be willing to do what? Minister. Oh, that's where we struggle. I felt the deliverance right there. In order for God to get the glory, we must be willing to do two things. Do you see it in the scriptures? We must be willing to speak for God and we must be willing to what? Minister. That means that I must remove myself from the mindset that someone else will speak for him. In order for God to receive the glory out of my life, I must be willing to minister for God. That means that I must remove my mind, myself from the mindset that someone else will do what? Minister for God. That means I must remove myself from the bring my friend to church to hear the pastor evangelism strategy. Oh, just raise both of your hands. Deliverance. 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 That means I must remove myself from the bring a friend to church to hear the pastor evangelism strategy. In order for God to be glorified, you must be willing to both speak and to do what? Minister. If you do that, the Bible says that God in all things may be glorified through who? To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. And just so you will have to accept it, it ends it with a amen. amen. So let it be written, so let it be done. Amen. A the man. Do you see that, Brother Jamar? Just so you will know that God's glory includes you, it makes sure that this ends with an A what? Man. And if you look in your Bible, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, you will see that 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11 isn't even the last scripture in the book. It wanted to catch your attention. It wanted to make sure that you understand that, that God is putting his seal on this formula. 
We are required, we have a mandate to speak, and we have a mandate to minister. We do it as of the ability which God has what? Given us. The only question is, are you okay that you have the ability? Raise your hand if you're okay with it. All right, I want you to write this down. I want you to write down, this is the year of edification. This is the year of exhortation. I want you to write down, just, just a note for yourself. Nobody else is going to see this. I want, you to, I want you to ask yourself this question, but I want you to answer it. How many sermons more do you need before you're completely convinced that you have the ability? Just pick a number, any number. This is just for you. How many more messages do you need to hear before you are convinced that you have the ability as opposed to someone else has the ability? Just write it down, sister. Say, don't look at me. Brother Wyatt, stop distracting Sister Tawana. Is he taking notes? Hallelujah. The question is, do you believe that you have the ability? Go over to Galatians chapter 3. We are to speak and we are to minister. We are to speak and we are to all right, what are we ministering? Isn't that a good question? What is it that we are to minister? If it's my mandate because I have Christ in me, the hope of glory, living and moving and active on the inside of me, I am to speak as an oracle of God. I am to minister for him as I am led along by the word of God. I am to minister for him as I am led along by the Holy Ghost. How, what is it that I'm ministering what am I serving isn't that a good question sometime I'll go out to eat and I'll begin to look at it and I begin to say what is this sometime I'll begin to get a cheeseburger from a certain restaurant that's scriptural don't say what it is just say like a certain man a certain I went to a certain restaurant and I began to look between the buns and I begin to ask myself what is this what are they serving? What is the source of this material? Because I know what it looks like when mama uh, takes the, the hamburger and makes it into patties on her own, and this don't look exactly like that. I'm like, mm, the texture is off. What are they serving? And so it's, it's important for you to ask the question, what, if we are ministering, which meaning we are to be serving something, what are we serving? That's a question. That's a question. What are some Christians serving? All right, here it is right here. Galatians chapter 3, verse 5 says it. If you have it, say amen to that. Amen. Galatians chapter 3, verse 5 says, he therefore that ministereth to you the what? Spirit. Spirit. That's what you should be ministering. When we prophesy, what are we serving? What we're serving is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. When we lay hands on the sick that they might recover, what are we releasing? What should we be releasing? The Holy what? Ghost. When, 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 when the man or woman of God comes to you to release the word of God to you, what should be served, though? The Holy Ghost. When we, when we cast out demons, what's being served? The Holy what? Spirit. That's what we are ministering. He therefore that ministers to you the Spirit. Say the Spirit. the Spirit. And works miracles among you. Do it he by the works of the law or by the hearing of what? Faith. The hearing of faith means that I minister the Spirit as I am led along by the what? Holy Ghost. That's called again an utterance. That's called being an oracle. Being an oracle means that I receive utterance from the Holy Spirit and I only go as far as he desires. I only go as far as he what? 
leads me. And so it can be, come on, Sister Brianna, come on, Sister Victoria, come on, Sister Sonia, bring Sister Saint with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bring Sister Veronica with you. She can come too. All right. And so it can be that I'm ministering the Holy Ghost and you have to be sensitive. Come on, this side, Sister Brianna. I could be ministering the Holy Ghost, and as I'm ministering the Holy Ghost, the Lord can lead me to give you a word. And then the Lord can lead me to give you Why are you in the back, Sister Saint? Oh. And then the Lord can lead me to give you a word. And then Sister Veronica, the Lord can lead me to give you a word, and then I can turn toward you, and then the Holy Spirit won't give me a what? Word. word. Does that mean the Holy Spirit don't love you? No. Is that what that means? No. Is, is, is that mean that God has forgotten about you? No, that's not what that means. All that means is that as a, as a servant who is responsible to speak, let me move on. You, I'm going to let you be the servant this time so that, you, so that you will know that you are equipped. As a servant ministering to us, mm-hmm. Amen. as a servant ministering to us, you Amen. might minister to us, but then you may turn toward Brianna and you might not have a word for Sister Brianna. Does that mean that God does not have a word for Sister Brianna? No, that just means you don't have a word for Sister Brianna, is that all right? Mm -hmm. That's okay, right? That can happen. That can happen on Sunday morning. That can happen in the hour prior. That can happen at your family reunion. But the question is, are you open to receive a what? Word. That's the only question. The only question is, do you believe you are equipped? The only question is, do you believe you can do what Jesus did? And the only question is, are you waiting for it to fall on you as opposed to being aggressively available to be an oracle for for God. That's the only question. Amen. Give them a hand. He that ministers to you the spirit and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of what? Faith. Faith. And we learn what faith is again. Faith is the aggressive act of our will according to the word of what? God. So that means that when I minister, I follow the word of God. In the 66 books, as I am led along by the Holy what? Spirit. Spirit. All right, that was Galatians chapter 3, verse 5. Go to Romans chapter 15. So Christ is in me, the hope of glory. I have the anointing from the Holy One. I know the Holy One. His name is Jesus. The same anointing that was upon Jesus is available within me. Jesus died. He gave his life. He rose again on the third day specifically so that the anointing that was upon his life could be dispersed to me, could be dispersed Abroad. Romans 15, 13 says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in what? Peace. Oh, that's the issue. Amen. That's the issue, Sister Rosie. The issue is, am I believing? The issue, Sister Brianna, is am I in, in the position constantly of believing that I can do what God has called me to do? As Christ is where? On the inside of me. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. In what though? Believing. Believing. So the, the, the question is, are you excited, joy, and are you okay with it? Peace. That Christ is in you. Are you okay? You have joy that Christ is in you and that you believe that. You okay with that? I'm okay with that. I'm prayed up. I'm in peace with it, that Christ is in me, and I can do that which Jesus did. If I can, if I'm okay with that, the Bible says that your hope will do what? Abound. The reason that I have hope is because I accept it, that I'm not a, a powerless orphan in the land. Jesus said, I have not left you to be what? Orphans. Why I'm hopeless is because I've accepted the idea through 30, 40 years of of preaching that I'm a dirty, filthy rag, which means that I am a powerless orphan in the land. Jesus has all the power, and he's not here anymore. He rose from the dead. He died for me. 
He left me here with an escapist theology waiting for him to break the eastern sky again. My job is just to go around preaching that we're dirty, filthy rags. The way we're going to get delivered from that is when he breaks the eastern sky again and unlocks the door to the orphanage so that we can have parents again. Is that what the scripture says? No. The scripture says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and what? Believing. believing. This believing should cause you to have what? Hope. hope. That hope is through the power of who? Where is the Holy Ghost located? Within you. The escapist theology keeps telling me the Holy Ghost is in me, but teaching me it operates on the outside of me. Oh, you got to get this. You got to accept this. This is your Sunday. Evangelical theology teaches me that I have the Holy Ghost, but he only operates on the outside of what? Me. Doesn't it teach that? It tells me he's in me, but then in practice tells me he operates where, though? Well, doggone it, why is he within me then? The scripture said, no, that's how it happens. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could even ask or imagine. It's according to the power. Where does it work, though? Within me. And to continue to believe that it works on the outside of you is anti-Christ then. Because Christ is where? On the inside of, of you. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's look at that. First Corinthians chapter two, four and, and five. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of what power. That's how it should happen. There's an expectation that we will get beyond words and get to the to the exercise part, get to the, the activation part, get to the demonstration of the spirit and of what power. The reason why we need to do that is so what we believe as Christians will not just stand on uh, finely crafted theologies and philosophies. The Bible says what we're believing does not just stand on the wisdom of what? Men, because theologies can change over time. Can't they? Theologies can shift like shifting shadows over time. In the, in the 1960s, they were preaching that Jesus, Jesus is beginning to come soon, brother. You need to accept Christ tonight, you do not know the day or the hour. And they had it calculated that he was going to come in the 60s. But then he didn't break the eastern sky in the 60s. So guess what we did? We changed our theology to believe he's coming in the 70s. So when the stock market crashed in the late 70s, people began to prophesy. When the stock market crashed, people started jumping out of windows. People started killing themselves. People started being depressed because they believed Jesus was coming in the in the 70s, and then Jesus didn't come in the 70s. So what we do now? Shift our theology again. But what we're hoping for is not based on shifting theologies. What we're hoping for is what stays the same. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's Christ what? In you, the hope of glory. In that is power. Say power. power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of what? God. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, y'all. How do you receive it? Go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Say, it's all. Say, it's all about Jesus. Say it again. Say, it's all about Jesus. Galatians chapter 2. Verse 20 tells us how it is about him. It says, I am crucified with what? Nevertheless, I yet not, but Christ lives where? Christ live on the inside of me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself what? For me. Jesus, Jesus loves me. You don't love God? I love God. 
what's wrong with you? <laughs> right? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. He loves me and gave himself what? For me. He did that so that Christ could be what? In me. The, the, the only problem is do I accept it? What am I accepting? It, do, you, do I accept that I am dead in Christ? Amen. That's the only issue, Sister Rosie. Do I accept that I'm dead in Christ so that every time it's time for me to move in the power of God, I know that the burden is not what? No. On me because it's not about me. No. I'm crucified with who? Christ. Christ. That means I died in him. Amen. And when he rose again, I what? Rose. I rose in him, a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. Is he not? And so I am a new creature. If I believe that I am a new creature, that means that there is a transformation of the way I speak. And there is a transformation in the way I think. Did you get that? If to be a new creature is meaning there's a transformation in the way I speak, Brother Jamar. And there's a transformation in the way that I do what? Speak the way the way that I speak and and think as a man thinketh so is what he and so I transform the words that come out of my mouth and I transform the thoughts that I have if I deal with my thoughts my mouth will do what father a good man out of the good treasure of his heart does what bring forth speaks what that which is what good an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is what evil for of the abundance of the heart the mouth does what speaks and so there are two things that I need to transform which means I need to remove myself constantly from the speech that I use that convinces me that I am not able or ready to do what Jesus did y'all come back to me say I will not interfere with the production team just come back to me. I'm still handsome. Y'all look at me. <laughs> I just wanted to see what Sister Tawana was going to say if I said that. All right? Amen. I died in who? Christ. Let's go up. Let's see. Whenever you hear yourself making it about you, then you know you have not accepted what Jesus paid for which is Christ in you. Oh, I want you to digest that. Whenever you enter into a power situation, it's time to prophesy. It's time to lay hands on the sick that they might recover. It's time to cast out demons. It's time to help somebody. Whenever you hear yourself Words come out of your mouth. Whenever you hear yourself making it about you, then you know you have not accepted what Jesus paid for, which is Christ what? In you. Whenever you hear yourself using that language, I'm not sure right now if I hear something. I'm not sure right now whether the power is going to be available for to bring about healing. Get, what, what are you beginning to do? You're beginning to make it about who? You. you begin, you're beginning to make it about whether or not you have the ability to bring the miraculous to pass. And whenever you hear yourself doing that, what you now know is that there, there is some room on the inside of you to accept what Jesus died for a little bit more because it's not about you. It's about Christ where? In you. In you. Because the scripture said you are crucified with what? Christ. Christ. Nevertheless, you no longer what? Live. Live. It's Christ who? Where? In what? You. How do we know that? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Say amen when you get to that. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. 
But we have this treasure. Say treasure. But we have this treasure. Where is it at? In earthen vessels. What is it? What is it? The treasure that's on the inside of us. It is that the excellency of the what? It may be of what? But not of us. The only question you need to ask yourself is if you accept that, then why are you worried about that? Why are you worried about how it's going to happen? All I know, come here, Sister Rosie. All I know is that Christ is on the inside of me. Come on, sister. The, the pulpit is only as holy as we are. Come on, Sister Kelly. You post whenever I lay hands on a sister, y'all post to move. All right. Watch this in YouTube. Where, where is the camera? We don't have no camera light. Which is it this camera right here? Watch this on camera. Pastors all over the world. Because pastors, you know you can't touch nobody. Joe Biden can't even hug people now. <laughs> pastors all over the world, when you minister the spirit to a sister, just bring another sister. That's all you got to do. All right now. But now that we know that, raise your hand if you know that. Now that we know that, sisters, y'all got to move faster. That's all. That's all it takes. Right? I'm going to minister to you, and then while I'm ministering to you, you're going to have at least one eye open looking like what you're getting ready to do. Right? That's all you got to do. Now, if we do it this way, we are now safe. <laughs> say you're safe. safe. And, you know, if y'all need a safe word or something, just say so. <laughs> y'all going to get that on the way home. <laughs> all right. So when, I'm, when I minister, I have faith. Christ is on the, the inside of me, right? And then if, if God tells me that you need healing, I just begin to pray in the spirit. I let healing arise within me because that's one of the nine gifts. And then I just release that to you in what? Jesus' name. And Sister Kelly has her hands ready to, to receive you. And then you can look back at her for assurance that it's not going to fail. <laughs> right? All right? And so I just released that. Now, once I release that, I, do I have faith? Is Christ on the inside of me? Is it about me? No. Who is it about? What does it say? What, turn to it. What is it about? We have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the, the power is excellent, though. Say excellent. excellent. We're going to talk about why it's excellent in a minute. The power is excellent, but who is it of, though? God. And it's not what? So I'm not worried about that. I'm, I'm prayed up. I'm good with it. I'm good. There's power on the inside of me. It's excellent. You've been sneezing for a long time. We want you to stop. Right. And so I pray in the spirit that you receive. I pray that you receive that in Jesus name. And then after that, guess what? I'm done. If you fall out, that's good. If you stay standing up upright, that's good, too. If you shout, that's good. If you go back to your seat and say you the same way you were before I lay hands on you. Guess what? That's good too. I, maybe it happen. I'm, I'm believing. I have, I have two things. I have peace and joy in what? Believing. I believe it's going to happen because the scripture said these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. believe. And all you have to do is come back tomorrow and say I'm still sneezing. So you come back again. I believe again. Jesus laid hands on the blind man. He said, I see all men as trees. So at, at the very least, I get two times like Jesus did. Right? Right? I'm like Christ is what? In me. Right? So at least I, if he, he need two times, I'm good with that. Right? I lay hands on you what? Again, in Jesus' name, in peace and joy of what? Believing that the excellency of the power may be of what? And not of? Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give them a hand. Let's talk about the excellency. Say excellency. Let's talk about for a second the excellency of his power. Can we talk about that for a second? All right. Let's, to talk about that, go over to Luke chapter 8, verse 46. You shall receive power. But the scriptures say, say that his power, though, should be excellent. Did you get that? Yeah. 
He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all I can even ask or think according to the power that works where? In me. But, but, but the scripture does say, though, that his power should be what? Excellent. What that mean? I'm glad you asked. This is the story of Jesus as he was ministering to the woman with the issue of blood. Those of you who are Bible students, because you studied to show yourself approved unto God so that you'll be a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know that before the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment, that Jairus, that ruler of the synagogue, had, his daughter was a dying and Jesus was on the way to heal her. But while he was on the way to heal his daughter, the woman with the issue of blood interrupted the power. When she interrupted the power, Jesus said these words, somebody hath touched me. If you know the scriptures, all denied that it was them. The apostle Peter said, Lord, why are you, the people throng you, Jesus, everybody touching on you, Jesus. Everybody like you, Jesus. Jesus said, no, somebody has what? Touched me, for I perceive that what? Virtue has what? Gone out of me. What does that, that mean? Those, if you look up the word virtue in your Strong's concordance, you'll see that that is that Greek word dunamis. Jesus said, I perceive that what? Power has what? Gone what? Out of me. The same power that of the anointing that he said was what? On him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had what? Anointed me to remove burdens and to destroy what? Yokes. And so when the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garden, a burden was removed. When she touched the hem of his garden, a, a what she had been struggling with for a long time, her blood, her issue of blood staunched. That burden, that issue of blood was destroyed. And so in response, Jesus said, someone has touched me, for I perceive that power is what? Going out of me. But the translators saw that there's a difference in this Use of the word power. And so they use the word what? Virtue. virtue. Why they use the word virtue? The reason why they use the word virtue is because they were students of power distribution. Were my engineers who paid attention in power conversion class? Y'all ain't pay. Y'all all project managers and business developers now. Y'all don't know nothing about. Did y'all pay attention in? Where my EEs at? Electrical en engineers? Where are my chemical engineers at? Computer engineers, computer scientists. Y'all paid attention in energy conversion class. You work for comment? Oh. Those of you who paid attention in, in, in power transmission and distribution class, you will know that if you contaminate the power source, what will, what will happen? There will be a problem with the transmission and distribution of that what? Power. That's why if somebody hit the telephone pole by your house, what happened? You have a power what? Outage. And then you'll be calling Sister Kelly in customer service. And you won't even get her. They're going to send you an automated message. We know it's out. Why are you calling us? We have calculated that the power will be back in 35 what? Minutes. And they lying. If they... <laughs> 35 hours. And because Sister Kelly is over customer service, they lied to you just then. Because they want to set your expectation. If they say it's 35 minutes, in 20 minutes it'd be back on there. They set your expectation. What they, what they know is if you contaminate the power source, though, then you are at resistance. Say resistance. resistance. If you contaminate the power resource, that's called adding resistance to the circuit. That's what a resistor is. A resistor is something to contaminate the flow of power current. You're at resistance to the circuit, and so when you get ready to close the circuit, what will happen? Either power, either there will be a power outage, or there will be very what? 
slow power. That's why some of you, when you plug your little square into the wall to charge up your phone, it charged real slow. The reason they charge real slow, that's a clue to you. You need to go back to Best Buy and get a new one. Amen. You're like, why? Well, it used to charge really fast. Mm -hmm. Well, since you got it at Best Buy, you've been putting it in your bag and smashing right. it. <laughs> you've been lending it to your kids. They've been throwing it up against the wall. Uh -huh. the, the, the prongs on it are bent now. Uh -huh. The cable got a short in it now. It'll still charge your phone, but guess how it's going to charge it? Uh -huh. Has the power from the wall changed, though? No. no. What's the problem? The problem is that you've done something to bring an impurity, an unclean spirit, some resistance to the what? To the power source. And because you did that, the, the power source is no longer as virtuous as it once was. And so what the, the problem is, is that some cleanup in the circuit is needed. That's what the problem is, because there's a problem of holiness in the circuit. That's why when it's time to lay hands on the sick, you're not really that ready to be the one that lay hands on them because you know what you did last night. <laughs> and so it creates some doubt in your conscience on whether or not you should be the one who ministers the spirit. The problem is not actually the source. Christ in you. The problem is the resistance between the source and you and the person needing the healing. The resistance between the source and the person needing the healing is you. You are providing resistance because you do not have a clear conscience. And so what is occurring is that there is an issue with how pure or how holy the circuit is. The problem is not that there's no prophetic word, for Jesus calls himself the word of what? God. So that means Jesus is always speaking. Jesus is speaking right now, isn't he not? The problem is not whether or not Jesus is speaking. The problem is whether or not you feel like if you insert yourself into the circuit. The problem is if you, you feel like if you insert yourself into the flow of knowledge, whether or not it'll come out clearly, on the other end, because you argue with your wife on the way to church. And while you're getting ready to prophesy, your wife is looking at you like, now how are you going to speak for Jesus? You can even speak for me right in the car. <laughs> are you with me this morning? So that the answer is, is there a need for holiness as a part of the what? Power. The answer is what? Yes. yes. The problem is not Jesus who is supplying the power. The problem is not the Holy Spirit who's supplying the power. The problem is only in your acceptance that there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life has made me free in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Are you with me this morning? And so the, the, the purpose of a holy lifestyle now that you are, are under grace is to keep your conscience what? Clear so that you can feel like you smell good before what? Jesus. Jesus already know you smell good. He said your body is the temple of the what? Holy Ghost. But the problem is not that you don't smell good. The problem is you don't think you do. Oh, come on, get delivered this morning. The problem is you feel dirty in your, in your conscience. And so what happens is as a man thinketh, so is what? He. And then you interrupt the, the power. Are you with me this morning? First Thessalonians chapter 1. Let's look at that. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. Is this a good word? For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in what? And in the Holy Ghost. And in much what? Assurance. assurance. Say assurance. assurance. As you know, what manner of men we were, what? Among you. Why they tell you that part? Why they say you know what manner of what? Men, men we were, what? Among, among you. Why they tell us that part? They're trying to get you to see we're just like what? You, but we have access to what? Power. 
If we're just like you, we have access to power. Guess what that means? You can do it too. Look at your neighbor and say, I can do it. This is the last scripture. I told you I was going to be done before long. 1 Timothy chapter 1. That's probably 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Is that still wrong on my slide? Let's see if I had a gospel. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. AB team, if you could help me. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Stand where you are. I'm not through preaching. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Seven. I want to impart this to you. I want to impart this to those in YouTube land, in KAC Nation. You can do whatever you do when you receive something. I just want you to receive this. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given you the spirit of fear. You no longer need to be afraid. You no longer need to be timid. Some of your Bible say God has not given you the spirit of timidity. You're a king and a priest. You are a son of God. Even if you're female, you are still a king. You're still a priest. You are still a son of God. Of God. Scripture says, Many as received him, ha <laughs> ha, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. As many as believe on his what? Name. That's John chapter 1, verse 12, if you need that, that reference. God has not given you a spirit of what? Fear. I want us to say that together. God, God has, not given, has not given, has not given me. The spirit of what? The spirit of fear. All right, and so I, what I want you to make sure you get from that is that if you do have the spirit of fear, you know where it did not come from. Whenever you begin to fear, whether it's when signs are getting ready to follow you, if you, whenever fear begins to creep in, you need to say, "Ooh, I know where that came from. It was not from. It was not from Jesus. For God has not given you the spirit of what." Fear. What, what kind of spirit has he given you? But of what? Power. Of virtue. But of power and of love. What does that love part mean? The love part means that not only do you have the power to do something about sickness and disease, not only do you have the power to do something about unclean spirits, but you also have the ability to get beyond yourself. You also have the ability to get beyond your own issues in order to release it to someone else. <laughs> it mean, love means you also have the ability to get beyond worrying about your house and your spouse and your children and your job and your schooling and your bills so that you can release the spirit of power to someone else. God has not given you a spirit of what? Fear. A spirit of fear is when, because of the cares of this world, I make myself strategically unavailable to release it to someone else. That's called, the reason why I would do that is because I'm flowing now in the spirit of what? Fear. The spirit of fear says, mm, if I take time out of my busy schedule, if I take, take time out of my thought life to minister to you, then my kids are going to suffer at that moment. Oh, this is a good gospel of Jesus Christ. The spirit of fear says, if I take some men a mental vacation from worrying about what's going to happen with my spouse and my job to take time out to release power, to you, then my career and my cash flow is getting ready to suffer at that moment. And the Bible said that's not the kind of spirit you have. Or at least if you do, it did not come from who? God. God has not given you the spirit of what? Fear. Fear. But of what? Power and of? Love. And of a? What am I having a sound mind about? What I'm having a sound mind about is that God won't 
act like he doesn't know me when we get in public. What I have a sound mind about is that I'm not worried if I minister the spirit to someone that God is leaving my stuff unattended. I have a sound mind about that. I know while I'm, I'm ministering, I know why I'm doing what Jesus has called me to do, that Jesus is in the background taking care of my what? Stuff. Because he said, as I was with Moses, so I will be what? With you. I will not forsake you. I will not fail you. And so I am joy and peace of believing that I'm God's man or God's woe man. I'm in joy and peace of believing that I'm God's man and that he is, he is able to release his power through, through me. I am able to speak and I am able to minister effectively for Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for these people. I thank you for your people. I thank you. For, for the kings and priests that you have endued with the power of the Holy Spirit to minister to this dark world effectively. You have not given us the spirit of fear, but you've given us the spirit of power. You've given us the spirit of love and a sound mind. We have peace. You said in your word that your peace, which passes all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you believe that, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated right where you are. If you're here today, you never accepted Jesus Christ.